Hello everyone, this is Protasilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to show you a new feature that I have developed for uh, the Binary Space Partitioning Window Manager, BSPWM. It concerns dynamic desktops. Uh, I will bring up my TMAX session. The session is active I am, uh, and I am attaching back to it. Uh, first, let me show you the upstream uh, configuration file for BSPWM and how it defines uh, desktops or else uh, workspaces. Desktops are called in BSPWM terminology. We see here this line here. I have enlarged the fonts, by the way, so to make it easier for the purposes of this demo. And we see here that it, uh, for the given monitor, it uh, sets uh, 10 uh, desktops and uh, it names them using nom Roman uh, numerals. And this is the way you would normally work in BSPWM. You would have a fixed number of uh, desktops and you would have uh, to manage those. However, if we read the man page, BSPC, man BSPC or man BSPWM, BSPC, by the way, is the client program that communicates with the window manager. Um, they, it's, I, unless I am mistaken, it's the exact same uh, man page. Uh, and if we search, we will see in the man page that there is an option to add desktops. And there are other options as well to manipulate the desktops, reorder them, remove them, uh, and things like that. Which means that given some scripting, we can uh, uh, develop uh, dynamic uh, desktops. Uh, what is a dynamic desktop in case you have no idea what I'm talking about? It means that um, the number of desktops is not predefined. It is determined uh, on the spot. So we see here, uh, if you look at the top of my panel, you will see that there is desktop number one, which is the current desktop. It has focus. And there also exists desktop number nine, which is occupied. There I have the program that uh, does the recording, um, OBS uh, Studio. No need to switch to it now. So we have two desktops in total, and we can confirm this. If we, if we, let's come here, we can confirm this by running uh, BSPC and the command that lists the desktops. And if we pass the option names to it, it will list the desktops uh, using their name. And their names are just uh, numerals, one and nine. And this is correct. We have only desktops one and nine currently. Now let's say uh, I want to do some work on desktop number two, but desktop number two does not exist. What, what would happen now? If I use the key binding to move to desktop number two, which is super under number two, the script that I have defined will just create the desktop uh, on the spot. And if I move back to desktop number one, Desktop number two will be removed because it holds no windows. It is not occupied. Therefore, it has no purpose uh, to exist. It has no need to be there. There is no need. Now, let's go back to desktop number two again. Let's create a new window here. So this desktop is currently occupied. Let's go back to desktop number one. We see that desktop number, number two is indeed occupied. And this time it was not removed. Let's rerun the command that lists the desktops to see if this is indeed the case. We see that it is indeed the case. Before we had two desktops, now we have three. And of course, if I move to desktop number three or desktop number four and create new windows there so that the desktops will persist, and if I run the command again, we see that we have one through four and then desktop nine, as is the case indeed here. Another thing I have in my script is the ability to automatically reorder the desktops. So for example, so that they appear in a numeric uh, sort. So if I have, for example, desktop number four here, and then I switch to desktop number two, it will not appear to the right of number four. So it will not appear in chronological order as the desktops uh, spawn, but rather in uh, numerical order. So if I go to desktop number two, it, it should come to the left of desktop number four as these appear on the panel. Let's see. Indeed, this is the case. And the same for number three, etc. No need to uh, delve in that. Very nice. Um, what I have as well, uh, I have uh, incorporated this script. This is the script, by the way. 
it's a work in progress because I still need to improve the inline documentation, uh, perhaps refine some aspects of the code. And I also think that uh, I want to add a couple of features, test them, of course, uh, pertaining to multi-head uh, setups, uh, dual monitor setups. Anyhow, this is the script. It's a free software, of course, uh, GPL. Um, I don't want to walk you through the script. I prefer that uh, you you check my dot files and uh, read it at your own pace. And uh, by the way, um, whenever I am demoing a script, you should always assume that this is not its final version. I am just demoing the functionality. What matters is how things work rather than the actual uh, contents of the script because uh, I always review these. I might think of things to add and stuff like that. Anyhow, uh, I have incorporated this new script of dynamic uh, desktops. I have incorporated it in my previous um, script. I had it in the last video I did, um, which pertains to multifaceted operations. This is another advanced, uh, another scripted method I have, whereby we operate on a multitude of uh, windows or desktops at once. And I have it here in, uh, in this specific command here. I have a command whereby you can send the contents of the focused desktop to another desktop. So I have it here to send the contents of the focused desktop to a desktop that does not exist yet. So to a dynamically created desktop. Let's put this to the test. Let's, uh, um, let's try it right away. So I have these four windows here and I will just write in each of them the number one so that we know where they are coming from. And let's say I want to send them to desktop number four. So I will run the command that does that. Um, you can check my dot files. I will link to them at the end. Uh, all the key bindings are defined in uh, SXHKD, the simple X hotkey daemon. And by the way, I also have a video on that, which is uh, very informative and uh, uh, explains why I think this is a very powerful uh, program and uh, you can use it even outside the confines of BSPWM, a BSPWM session. Anyhow, I sent all my windows to desktop number four but the uh, focus uh, has stayed on desktop number one. So I can continue my work here. Uh, and this is my intended workflow. So to send everything to desktop number four and stay here. Let's go to desktop number four. We see that all the windows that I had from desktop number one are right here waiting for me. This is exactly what I wanted. And we can see here that this brings together and uh, merges the functionality of the dynamic desktops as well as the multifaceted operations that I showcased in, the, in, in my last video. Um, I'm trying to think if there is something else. I believe that's all there is to it. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing about BSPWM, that uh, by default it is very plain and it, uh, it seems as though it is rather limiting in its uh, set of features. Uh, it is not readily apparent what you can do with it. But as you go through the man pages and uh, as you start uh, developing an understanding of uh, how things work, it becomes clear that you can uh, script the various features into BSPWM. So if you see my last videos, I have a backlog. Uh, I, have, um, I have already showcased how we can use receptacles, uh, pre-selection and uh, marked uh, windows, marked the flag, the, the flag for marking windows to, to, to do advanced manual tiling operations. I have also a video where we can uh, script the behavior of BSPWM using external rules, again, to leverage uh, some features of uh, advanced uh, manual tiling operations. I have the other one I did before with the multifaceted, the, this one of operating on multiple windows at once, and the, now the dynamic desktops. And I think as time moves on and the more we are accumulating custom scripts, the more it is clear that BSPWM is uh, an exceptional piece of software because it is uh, robust, it is very well written, uh, out of the box it works fantastically, but uh, because it is scriptable, it opens up uh, these uh, possibilities for um, uh, tailoring the workflow exactly uh, to our needs. 
So that covers it. Uh, that's all uh, for now. Thank you very much for your attention, folks. Just to link to my dot .files uh, for you to see everything. So my dot .files are available on gitlab.com uh, forward slash protesilos forward slash dot .files. Here it is. Um, and by the way, in my dot .files, I have a link to a, a book I have written. Uh, which uh, details the process uh, for uh, reproducing my custom desktop session on Debian 10 Buster. Uh, these features that I am demoing now have not been uh, merged yet in the code that this book uh, works with, but I will be doing so in the coming days or weeks, especially as we are approaching the release of uh, Debian 10 Buster, which uh, according to the latest uh, official sources, uh, should happen on the 6th of July uh, 2019. That's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.